Hello, it's Sonal Bukhari. I'm the uh, Editor-in-Chief of Rheumatology. We're here at the British Society's Rough Rheumatology Meeting 2019 with over 2100 delegates. And uh, we're just here, I'm interviewing Professor McGonagall, who is one of our, uh, who has just got a very highly cited and downloaded paper in the journal. He's going to tell us a bit more about it. Dennis, tell us a bit more about it, about yourself, the paper, and how you did it. Okay, Marilyn. Hi. Uh, thank you very much for asking me to do this, and congratulations on your tenureship as the new editor of Rheumatology. And I was delighted that you asked me to present, and uh, I was very surprised that our paper on fibromyalgia and emphysitis and psoriatic arthritis and the differentiation of the two uh, was, was a topic that your readership uh, was very, very keen on. So uh, I'm an academic rheumatologist and I'm very interested in psoriatic arthritis and in the transition from psoriasis to psoriatic arthritis. And we believe that emphysitis is a cardinal lesion. And of course, patients with isolated emphysitis or isolated polyemphysitis may not have any soft tissue swelling and they may not have a demonstrable acute phase response. And uh, it occurred to us that we need to write about this because the differentiation between polyemphysitis in a subject with psoriasis or psoriatic arthritis and fibromyalgia may be very difficult. Yeah. So um, how do you find that? I mean, is it more that imaging will help? Do you think that the sites of trauma will help? or do you think? Uh, yeah, so I think it's a, it's a multifactorial approach as, as, as to how you find it. Uh, first of all, uh, in patients with chronic pain, uh, that has a, a greater propensity to the lower limbs or linked to an inciting event that might point you more towards a history of emphysitis. But these patients with psoriasis may often have lots of chest wall pain and may not have focal tenderness. So issues such as morning stiffness, a response to anti-inflammatories, NSAIDs, or a response to a de depot of steroid injection would point more towards an inflammatory component. Um, so that would be the, f the first aspect. So it will be the clinical response. The clinical response is, yes, is, is very important. Okay. And I'd go so far as to say in the real world there are patients with psoriasis or even without who have been labelled as having fibromyalgia but who actually have a polyemphysitis. And what happens is they somehow manage to get access to biologics historically an anti-TNF because these, these were first to the market and I have several patients I see who have classical inflammatory polyemphysitis where their occupation or life has been transformed by getting a biologic therapy for this uh, emphysial syndrome. Yes. Now, of course not easy to do in the UK where we need the three swollen joint rule but it may be easier in other jurisdictions uh, yeah, around okay. the world. Uh, so, so just thinking about it, so for a clinician who is reading and downloading this paper, so would you recommend just using the six site leads and thyroid index or would you want to do the more involved Netherlands? Uh, yeah, yeah, so my personal take is so the, there are several emphysitis index and uh, the, the Mander was the original 66 site one developed for AS in the, in the 1980s. These are not used in clinical trials because they're our practice because they're viewed to take too long. But my personal opinion is emphysitis is where you would find it and I will assess these patients and press right along their spine, their rib cage and all of their large insertions which can be done fairly quickly. So I will examine all of the large joints for evidence of emphysitis and practically speaking because emphysial pain can be quite diffuse, it's not, very, not necessarily focal, because the pain is diffuse if you have somebody with tender joints without visible synovitis, then it could well be an emphysitis, so I wouldn't use any particular index. Okay. And if a patient really does have fibromyalgia, is it still difficult to tell them apart? Uh, yes, well of course, this is a very important question because if you have a non-diagnosed inflammatory disease and you've been told it's psychological, then eventually you will develop fibromyalgia on mm -hmm. top of the inflammatory condition. Yeah. Or likewise, patients with fibromyalgia may have psoriasis and develop emphysitis. So there can be both conditions present, which you've got to, got to deal with. Yeah. Uh, but there, are, there, are, there is this small group where when they get treatment, their previously diagnosed fibromyalgia gets better. Um, of course, there's no randomized trials in this arena because it's so hard to objectively measure emphysitis. We don't have a gold standard. 
histological evaluation. And I think you're going to ask me about the role of imaging. Yes. Yeah. But clearly very important. So there has been a recent study from uh, Antonio Mascherano, uh, my co-author on your paper in rheumatology, yeah. where in a la fairly large Italian cohort, they looked at normals and fibromyalgia subjects and psoriatic subjects. And there's more subclinical ultrasound enthesopathy in the psoriatic subjects compared to fibromyalgia subjects. But you can occasionally see subclinical enthesopathy in people without enthesitis, particularly related to age and obesity, for example. Exactly, because they, you, can get, you can get quite a lot of inflammatory responses in those patients, so it can be quite tricky. Yes, it, it certainly can. Yeah. So there'll be, there'll be a bit more coming, and hopefully we'll see more work from your group. Uh, yeah, no, thank you very much. Thank you.